right, hello to my Facebook audience, Prophet David Taylor here, and hello to my Periscope audience. Hope everybody's having a good Sunday so far. Hope that things are going well, I'm trying to get that situated. So hope you're having a good Sunday. We had a wonderful time uh, in worship today. It was really, really good. Also, unfortunately, found out about another tragedy, someone that lost a loved one in a car accident. It was really... Really sad. What am I trying to do? Okay, I'm trying to get my day together. So I've learned how to thank God for every every day and every moment that you have someone, uh, that you have with someone. And I also learn how to continue to use my faith and believe God for protection and believe that his glory will surround me like fire and that he will be my glory in the midst, which is Zechariah 2. Uh, is that Zechariah 2.4 or 2.5? That is Zechariah 2.5. Hey, how you doing? Where it says, For I declare the Lord will be a wall of fire around her, and I will be the glory in her midst. So I'm claiming that. I'm claiming that God is a wall of fire around me and the glory in my midst. But anyway, it was really kind of sad. So I'm just thanking God for every day, every moment that uh, we have with our loved ones. But anyway, let's get on with our message for today. As I tell you every week, uh, I pray before you see me. Last week I prayed on air, but I always pray before you see me because uh, it's the Spirit of God speaking through me. It's not me. And if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying nothing. Okay? So, um, as a matter of fact, let me show you this before we get into the Word. And that is... All right, Deuteronomy 18.22. Just want to throw this out. This is not the prophetic word for today, but this is a little teaching because um, I've noticed that it's something that not a lot of people know and or practice. Deuteronomy 18.22 says, uh, When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come about or come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptu presumptuously, you should not be afraid of him. That's the test uh, for prophets and prophecy in the scriptures. So if ever, you know, if you're ever wondering about the prophetic or somebody's making accusations and somebody's a false prophet or whatever, there's actually a test in the Bible. It's Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 22. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come about or come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. So when the Lord is speaking through the mouth of a prophet, when the Holy Ghost gives us something to say, if that's God talking, it's going to come to pass. It's going to come about. It's going to come true right there in the scripture. So you never have to worry about being able to tell the difference because that's something people ask me all the time. Oh, how do we know? Some people are false prophets. Okay, did what they say come to pass? There it is right there. Okay, so let's get on with the word today. I just want to drop that nugget. So the word today is one that I'm excited about. Okay, so the word that the Holy Spirit gave me today is, uh, the title of it is, The Joy of Fulfilled Desire. Again, The Joy of Fulfilled Desire. Okay, and our scripture reference is Proverbs 13.12. Okay, Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 12. Uh, out of the New American Standard Bible, it says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Out of the King James, that says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Uh, I like the New Living Translation. Amen. Uh, the New Living Translation, Translation says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. So pretty much every translation starts out with hope deferred. Deferred means something that didn't happen, didn't happen when you wanted to, delayed, turned away, uh, just, you know, uh, a hard pass, just didn't come to pass, didn't happen, or it's taken longer than you thought. Or the road is a road that's longer than you thought it would be. Or the price is higher than you thought it would be. So whenever you hope for something, you imagine 
having it. You imagine having that thing in your hand and in your life, and you want it in your hand. That's the point of hope. Hope is a spiritual substance that only lives in your heart. You do realize that, right? You realize that hope doesn't live anywhere but in your heart. You can't go to Target and get a six-pack of hope. You can't go to Walmart and get an 18-ounce can of hope. Hope is a spiritual substance, and it lives in your heart. And the reason that hope lives in your heart is because there's something that you're imagining, something that you're dreaming about, something that you want to have, that you want to possess in your life. And that hope gives you a reason to get up in the morning. That hope gives you energy. That hope gives you a reason to press forward because one day I hope to have it in my hand, no matter what it is, like I want to buy a new dog, saving up money, and one day I want to get a new dog, or I want to graduate. I hope to have that diploma in my hand one day, so I press my way through all my college classes. Uh, I hope to get married, want to have a wedding, want to have a wedding day, so I press my way to make that happen. I hope to uh, see my kids graduate, so I press my way uh, to make sure my kids graduate because I want to be there. I hope to buy a new car. I hope to buy a new home. Whatever. Whatever your hope is. I hope to start a new business. I hope to start a new ministry. Whatever your hope is, it only lives in your heart, in your spirit, because it's a spiritual substance. Hope is not a physical substance. It only lives in your heart. But then the Bible says, if it's deferred, if it doesn't happen when you thought it would happen, if it doesn't happen the way you thought it would happen, that makes your heart sick. You've seen people that are heart sick. You, if you're over three years old, you yourself have been heart sick in this life. You know what that looks like? When you're bent over, man, when you're walking so hard, you, you bent over, you're walking like that. When you're not even standing straight up. When you can't look people in the eye. When you can't finish a sentence without crying. Okay? Your heart's sick. And you're weeping. Okay? You've been heart sick. If you don't think you've been heart sick, then just keep living. Okay? And when you had a hope of something happening and it didn't happen, that's going to make your heart sick. And that's going to make you bow. That's going to make you bend. That's going to make you heavy. But then the Bible goes on to say, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. But a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. And that is what the Holy Ghost is telling us for those that have been hoping and believing and praying and working and sowing, that you're coming into that season where you can finally, see I'm feeling better just saying it, <laughs> where you can finally have that desire fulfilled. Because there's a lot that I've been working on in my life for a very long time. And there's been some delays, there's been some denials, there's been some detours, there's been some reroutes, there's been some rethinks, there's been some re-strategize, there's been some mistakes, there's been some lessons, there's been a lot. But there's been quite a bit I've been hoping for in my life for a while. And just to hear the Holy Ghost say, you're coming into that season when you're actually going to get it in your hand. When you're actually going to see it, where you're actually going to have it. That is awesome. And the scripture says it's a tree of life. That means it's not just a one-time event. It's a thing that continually bears fruit to sustain you, and trees also give you shade and protection. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you get that thing in your life that you've been hoping for, it's going to be a source of life to you. It's going to be a continual stream of life to you. It's going to be something where you can go eat the fruit thereof, and it continues to give you life. And the Spirit of God is saying that's the season that we're coming into. And that is awesome. That is the joy of fulfilled desire. So what I want you to do now is I want you to use the power of your imagination. There's two things that God gave us, if you don't know, that are unlimited. One thing that God gave you that's completely unlimited is your faith. Because you literally can believe anything. The other thing that God gave you that is literally unlimited is your imagination. Because there's no limits to what you can dream. Okay? So right now I want you to use one of your unlimited tools, the imagination, and I want you to imagine that thing you've been hoping for in your life. Imagine it right now as I'm talking. Imagine that, that new dog, bringing that new dog home, and watching that puppy run around your apartment or your house, and, you know, just smell everything and get used to the, 
the, the new smell and that puppy looking up at you and asking to be fed and that kind of thing. Imagine that. Imagine that feeling. Imagine the feeling of your graduation. Because uh, graduations tend to be really long days and they tend to be really hot because they're in the warm months. But imagine standing there with that robe. Imagine standing there with your, your graduation cap. Imagine standing up and turning your tassel and imagine, hey, Prophetess Selena, God bless you. And imagine when they call your name, especially if you have a name that's later in the alphabet like mine. My last name is Taylor. So, you know, when they, uh, <laughs> when you're towards the end of the alphabet, now sometimes they switch it up and they switch the order. So they call the Z's first, which is awesome. But imagine uh, you've been sitting there and you've been listening to all the speeches and all the music and all the, the guest orators. Then they call your name. You're standing over there in the corner of the stage and they say, whatever your name is, Alyssa Johnson, uh, Tracy Washington, uh, Katrina Mayfield. Okay? They call your name and you walk across and you get that diploma. Now, it's not the real one. It's symbolic. They'll give you the real one later. But you get that diploma and you shake the hand of the principal or superintendent or president of the college. Imagine that feeling after you've been working two, three, four, five, six years. Imagine that feeling, okay? Imagine the feeling of a new home, uh, especially a home that, that, that no one's ever lived in before. Let's say it's a new housing development. You got that house brand new, or let's say you built a house, or you found a house a really good bargain. Uh, that was a really good bargain, but hey, how are you? So imagine when you go in that house and there's no furniture and you get to, to decorate it and you start thinking about how it's going to look when you move in and it's got that new house smell because that new house smell is unmistakable, isn't it? And you think about how it's going to look and maybe you've got kids and you want to decorate the kids' room or maybe you're hoping to have children. And so you, you have something, you say, this is going to be the baby's room and this is going to be the den. And, and just so many different things that come. It's a lot of work, but when it's what you've wanted for a long time, it's the most awesome feeling when you move into that new space. I just mentioned having a baby. Imagine that. Um, uh, you know, we know uh, when, when women go into labor, we know that's awful for, in many cases. We know that labor pain is no joke. But imagine the joy that a little girl or a little boy is born into the world and your baby is healthy and normal and looking up at you with those tiny little eyes that are blinking outside for the first time. And the doctor or the nurse lays that baby on your chest, and you're both standing there so happy that you've had a child, and you bring that baby home, and just imagine, especially if you've always wanted kids. Some women, unfortunately, uh, have miscarriages. Sometimes women can't carry babies to term on the first couple tries, and if you've ever lost a child that way, it's very, very traumatic. But imagine that you have a pregnancy, and you bring it to term, and you go through labor, and you deliver the child, and you bring that baby home. Just just imagine that feeling. Imagine if you've wanted to get married and you, you finally met someone that you really feel like it can work with and you finally met someone who you feel like that this one is the one and there's been proposals and rings and engagements and there's been so much planning and so much uh, energy and so many things invested and then the day finally comes. The day finally comes where, where if you're a man, you can stand there and watch your bride come down the aisle. If you're a woman, you can walk down the aisle to meet your soon-to-be husband. And you guys can take your vows and make your pledge and you'll be married and you'll be a family. Imagine that feeling. Well, that's what the Holy Ghost is saying is about to happen in your life. See that? Didn't you go on that journey with me when I was talking? Didn't you imagine it? Didn't that feel great? Just finally having those things in your life where the Holy Ghost is saying, that's where we are in the spirit. That's what's about to happen in your life. And man, what a feeling, you know. And it's really funny because our pastor talked about it this morning. He talked about how people tend to only like stuff when it's negative <laughs> or people only want to talk about stuff when it's negative. So it's like some people, when you prophesy, they always want you to prophesy all this doom and gloom. And I'm like, no, you got to say whatever the Lord is saying. And when the Holy Ghost got some good news, you better enjoy that good news. If you've got any sense, there's plenty of bad news in life. You don't have to stir that up. Okay? 
So the Spirit of God is telling us that we're about to come into the place where that hope is going to become real. And that hope is going to show up in your life. Now let me release a prophetic word. For behold, my people, I have seen your patience. I have seen your faithfulness. I have seen your fidelity. I have seen your labor. I have heard the cries of your heart. I have seen your sowing. And now I release unto you the season of reaping of hope no longer deferred. I release unto you the spirit of joy of fulfilled desire where you actually have what you want in your hand and in your life and it's real and it's three-dimensional and when you receive these things you've been hoping for then be sure to give me the glory open your mouth and give your testimony and everywhere you go when people see you laughing when people see you smiling when they see you beaming when they see the change in your life because your heart will have sprung back to life for the joy and the tree of life that is now in it because you finally have your hope uh, realized. When people ask you why are you smiling and happy and beaming, be sure to give me the glory and let them know it's because I brought my word to come to pass and have made your joy full, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen, amen, and amen. That's a powerful word. That's an exciting word. I'm completely excited about it. I'm looking forward to some things showing up in my life, and I know that you are too. So now if anybody has any prayer requests, put them on the screen. I will uh, definitely do uh, lift those things up to God in prayer. Anything you want prayer for, put it on the screen now. I also want to let you know, uh, as I've said several times, no, I have, I have started a second broadcast. I broadcast on the second Thursday night of every month. So my next second Thursday broadcast will be on May 10th. May 10th, and I'm going to go with, someone told me that 6 o'clock was too early, so we're going to move it to 7 o'clock, and uh, we'll move it to 7 o'clock to give more people a chance to tune in live. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about is a genie concept. It's called NMG, No More Genies, and I'm going to talk about, you know, go all through genie concept and talk about how that has really messed us up and all that. But anyway, it's uh, something revelatory that the Lord has given me, something that really needs to be addressed in the body of Christ. So that's the second Thursday of every month. I come on at 7 p.m., uh, and I'm going to be talking about NMG, No More Genies. If you ever want to find me online, the fastest way to find me online is to hashtag, hashtag PDT, because I tend to put hashtags on everything that I do, Okay. So, of the no prayer requests, we'll close out today. So, remember, our scripture was Proverbs uh, 13 and 12. Uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. So, get ready to have that desire in your hand. And when you get it, and when you're rejoicing, and when you're happy, be sure to let everybody that sees you know that it's because of the Lord, because the Lord brought that to pass. And be sure to give Him the glory, because we never want to receive our blessings and not give God his due. That's just really rude. <laughs> when you've asked God for something, and you've cried out to God for something, and you've put some works behind your faith, and you've confessed, and you've believed, and you've sacrificed, but then when it finally happens, you don't want to just snatch that from God's hand and not say anything. Okay? You want to be sure that you tell Father, thank you. You want to be sure that you tell Jesus, thank you. And you want to do that in the power of the Holy Spirit. You want to pray in tongues. You want to dance. You want to worship. You want to give him glory for what he's done for you. All right? All right. God bless you, saints. You know, it's always my pleasure, my privilege to be with you every week. I'm excited about everybody that's coming to that season of Hope Realized and all of that joy. And I'm excited about it for me, too. <laughs> so when those things begin to come to pass, I will be sure to share them with uh, both my Facebook audience and my Periscope audience and my Twitter audience. Okay? God bless you. So let's move into a closing prayer. God, we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you that we just love you regardless. We thank you, Father, for Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for giving your life, for being the Lamb of God that allowed yourself to be crushed and bruised on our behalf. And you had a choice, so God, you didn't have to do that. You could have called 12 legions of angels to deliver you from that, but you made a choice to go through with it. And we just give you all the glory, Lord. We can't thank you enough, Lord. If we had 10,000 tongues, 
there would not be enough to sing your wonderful praise because you deserve the praise, Jesus. Truly, you are worthy. And you deserve the praise, Father. Truly, you are worthy. Truly, you are a good God. For you dem demonstrated your love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet uh, in sin, estranged away from you uh, and having no connection to you at all, you gave the Son. And I just thank you so much for Jesus, God. And I just thank you for the precious Holy Spirit and a chance to be able to move and flow in the prophetic. And it's something I don't take for granted. And we just thank you, oh God. We just love you regardless. You've already been better to us than we could ever repay. But, oh God, we thank you that your goodness has no end and that even with the goodness you've already bestowed, you have now brought us into a season of hope no longer being deferred and our hearts no longer being sick or heavy with disappointment. But, but a wellspring of life, a tree of life, something springing up on the inside of us, O oh God, that is something we've been waiting on and hoping for and believing for for a very long time. So I just thank you in advance for the things that are going to show up in my life. And we praise you and give you glory, Lord, for everyone listening to this broadcast, everybody that watches the replay. Thank you for all the wonderful uh, 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 things of hope that you're going to bring to us and the joy and the tree of life that it will produce. And we're going to be careful to give you the glory as we move forward with that new blessing. We're not just going to snatch it out of your hand and not say thank you. We're not going to be rude to you, God, because you're never rude to us. You're always kind, always there when we call you, always loving and gracious, always willing to forgive, always willing to show mercy, always thinking the best of us, always loving us, even when we don't love ourselves. So we give you the glory that is rightfully due your name, and I'm happy I'm proud to call you my God and give you the glory. And I'm proud to call myself a Christian. And I'm proud to love you and serve you, O oh God. And we give you the glory uh, that is due your name. And another God we will not serve. We will not bow down before other gods. We only bow down before you, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords, and he that is truly worthy to sit on the throne, and who has the name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So we thank you for it. We're looking forward to the blessings and we'll be careful to give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Well, again, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be here at my regular time next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. That will be Sunday, uh, Sunday May 6th. And then I will be on again that same week uh, Thursday, May 10th at 7 p.m. with No More Genies. And you definitely want to check that out. If you've been wondering if there's been some short circuits to your faith or if you've had some wrong ideas or if you've ever felt disappointed, then you definitely want to check out No More Genies. All right? God bless you. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I will see you next time. God bless.